Okay, good uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we'll just get started um, for the Learn About Using ArcGIS with Digimap Data webinar. Um, I think everyone can hear me, but if you want to just use, there's a little hand in the top right hand corner. If you can just click on that just to say that you can hear me okay, uh, that would be fine. Okay, that, that looks good. At least uh, some people there can hear me okay. So uh, just to kind of get started, my name is Guy McGarver. Uh, I'm part of the Edina Geo user support team. Uh, I'll be assisted by Tom Armitage, uh, also part of the team, and he'll be answering any questions you have uh, that you might want to ask during the webinar. So if you've got any questions, please use the, the questions tab uh, in your control panel to ask any questions and then we can answer those either in real time or later on we can uh, post those uh, to you. Um, just a couple of uh, uh, admin things. Uh, so after the webinar we'll be recording this uh, and we will put this up on uh, YouTube so that you can get uh, a copy of it or listen to it again or send it on to others. Um, there will also be the slides will be available and transcript of any questions and answers uh, that we get as well. And at the very end there will be a feedback form which I uh, would appreciate if you maybe fill that in and, and let us know uh, any feedback that you have of this particular webinar. Uh, we obviously run quite a lot of these uh, on different topics so you can either give us some feedback on this webinar or if you have any suggestions for future webinars please let us know as well. Um, so what we're going to cover today, uh, just in this kind of brief uh, half hour uh, that we've got, is kind of uh, just what data is available, uh, particularly for use within ArcGIS from Digimap, uh, and then how do we use that data, uh, or how do we get the data uh, from data download for use within ArcGIS, what format should we pick, uh, how do I load the data into ArcGIS, how do I style the data, and then some future resources. So we're kind of going to assume that uh, one, that you know a little bit about Digimap and what it offers. Um, there's obviously other webinars and, and other help materials if you need to find out more about Digimap itself. Uh, and also I'm going to assume a little bit of knowledge of ArcGIS and just some of the, the tools that they have and some of the things that you can do with the data there. So we won't be going into a lot of detail about uh, how to use ArcGIS. It will just be about kind of getting the data into ArcGIS from Digimap. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to cover. Um, I'm, su I'm assuming, uh, as I say, people know about Digimap. Uh, uh, your Digimap users and this is the normal access uh, to Digimap through the home page. So you would go to the home page here and then you'll see all the different collections uh, of data and obviously uh, for all the different data collections you've got different types of data within there. Uh, I won't go through all of them about how to get every different type of data into ArcGIS. Uh, you kind of can assume that if you can do it for one type of data in one collection then you can get the same sort of data from a different collection. Uh, so we'll just be taking some examples mostly from the Ordon survey uh, collection but those are equally applicable to other collections. So if we're talking about vector data, then you can get vector data from the geology or marine collections and use it in exactly the same way as you would the Ordnance Survey data. And similarly with raster data, uh, we can deal with raster data from any of the different collections in the same way. So um, this is just sort of kind of a brief overview of kind of the data that's available from Digimap that you might want to use in a GIS, uh, in ArcGIS specifically. Uh, from Ordnance Survey, there's the full range of OS maps, uh, but including OS Master Map and all the OS open data products as well. Uh, from Historic, we've got the detailed OS maps. Um, they're all in raster formats. In Geology, we've got the online, uh, onshore and offshore geological data. 
uh, in marine, uh, we've got the marine and coastal zone data, uh, environment, land cover data sets uh, from CEH, so that's uh, for different periods. Aerial, uh, there's the aerial imagery, uh, color imagery, uh, high resolution color imagery, uh, of the whole of the UK and uh, in the LiDAR data set we've got high resolution LiDAR from the Environment Agency and other suppliers. Um, so I say I won't be going through all of these but to, to kind of assume that if you can do this, this what, we, what we're going to show getting the data into ArcGIS you can deal with all these different uh, collections and different types of data. Uh, some of them there's a, there's a few little uh, tweaks like the LiDAR data is slightly different but uh, overall uh, you can deal with the data the same way. Um, of course you might not have access to all of these data sets depending on what collections your uh, particular institution subscribes to then you might not be, uh, you'll, you'll only have access maybe to a subset of this uh, data anyway. Uh, so how do I download data? Uh, well the first thing is in uh, each collection, you'll see a various, uh, if you select the like Ordnance Survey here, uh, we've got different uh, applications. There's always a ROAM and a data download application. Uh, and what we'll be dealing with here uh, exclusively really is the data download application. Um, and what we're going to do uh, if you look at the, the collections at the moment, it's slightly different to this uh, in this uh, picture here because we're in the process of releasing a new version of the data download. And it will be there, but it will be labeled uh, data download beta. Uh, my, my examples here will be using the, the existing data download, so the one you're familiar with. But if you want to go and try any of these, uh, getting the data with the new data download, then feel free to go and do that. Uh, please do that and, and give us any feedback because we're just in the process of releasing that um, as a beta and that will eventually uh, replace the existing data download. So have a look at that even though at the moment I'm going to be using the, the what we're calling the, the old data download or the, the existing data download. Um, and again, there, there are these for, for all the different applications, you've, uh, different collections, you've got these applications. So. In data download, the kind of basic steps, uh, I'm not going to go into this in a whole lot of detail, but really you select an area, um, you choose your data, and then you add that data to the basket. And that's really uh, the process uh, all the way through. Um, but what we need to do here when we're saying we're going to use this data in ArcGIS specifically is kind of think particularly about uh, the third option there. I, when you add it to the basket, sometimes you have options within the basket to change the format, the version, and the layers. And that can uh, either uh, make it easy for you to get the data into your GIS. It can save you processing the data once you've got it in your GIS. Uh, for instance, you can select only a subset of the layers that you're interested in. In that case, you don't then need to uh, filter the data later on in the GIS itself. So it's, it's worth thinking, what are you going to do with this data? What data do I need? Okay, now uh, what options do I have within data download to make my life easier later on? So if we... Uh, Go in and just look at, here's an example of a basket of data that we've selected uh, in data download. So we see here we've got various uh, products. We've got topography, which is the master map topography data set. We've got a building heights uh, data set. And we've got some OS open map local data set. And you'll see that uh, in different uh, columns here, we've got some different options. The ones that you're really... Uh, interested in. Uh, one is the version. Uh, version just gives you the ability to take either the most recent data or a historical version of the data. So it might be that you've been doing some work with some data from maybe a year ago in ArcGIS and you want to add another bit of data to that. Then you probably want to take the data from the same period or replace the whole data set with something new. In which case you can then choose the specific period of data that you want. Uh, the other uh, important uh, 
thing that you can choose is the format. Uh, as you probably know, different GIS uh, can accept data in different formats. And the most common format for ArcGIS is shapefile or file geodatabase. Here we're showing uh, some open map local, which is available as shape and GML. GML is the, the format that we get supplied often by Ordnance Survey. Uh, shapefile is often one that we will have converted the data to just to make it more usable in ArcGIS or, or other GIS. Uh, most GIS can also accept uh, shapefiles as well. So even if you're using QGIS or something else, then it's obviously quite a good idea to take a shapefile or a file geodatabase. Um, with a GML data, you would need to convert that data so that ArcGIS can read it, and we'll kind of show you how you can do that for master map data as well. Uh, what we can also do sometimes is select layers. So within topography, for instance, um, I can show we've got layers. Um, within that, there are subsets of the data, so the things like buildings, roads, uh, rivers, and if you're only interested in the roads or the rivers, then you can just select that data set directly. Uh, and again, that just saves you having to download too much data, deal with data that you don't need to deal with. Um, so if you don't need the data, there's no point in taking it, basically. But these options vary between the different map products. So it's just an idea to think, OK, uh, different map products will be in different formats, but what are the basic formats that I'm really interested in? Um, so. As I've said, with ArcGIS, the main formats you're really interested in are shapefile, if it's available, or a file geodatabase. Um, so, so for some formats, for instance, master map topo and building heights, we only supply a file geodatabase um, as, as well as other formats. But we don't supply it in shapefile, for instance. We only supply the file geodatabase. So if it's a if it's a choice between file geodatabase and GML, for instance, then for ease, you would use file geodatabase. Uh, there are some reasons sometimes that you might want GML, and there are tools available within ArcGIS um, uh, provided by Esri UK that handle that, and you can still use that. But unless there's a good reason for using GML, the easiest option is to use file geodatabase, and if it's available, uh, shape files. That's for vector data. Uh, for raster data, it's again the sort of similar ideas. There are some basic formats which are easier to use uh, than others in ArcGIS. The, the easiest one often is TIFF. Uh, so if, just if you just want a backdrop map or some imagery, then we've got TIFF. Um, for DTMs and for some other products, then there's an ASC file, which just stands for an ASCII text file. And again, ArcGIS can read those uh, fine as well. So that's really kind of the formats that you're looking for, either if you're looking at vector data or raster data. You're kind of looking to see, uh, are these formats available? And if so, uh, that's going to make your life easier. Um, and we've done that for most data sets, I wouldn't say there are a couple of data sets that we still haven't converted. Uh, some of the network data sets where uh, we've only got the GML data. Um, and really, if you're going to create a network, that's probably the best starting point anyway. Um, so the thing to do is to, first of all, to check the format availability. And within data download, you can look at each product. And next to each product, there's an info button. And that info button, uh, if you click on that, will bring up uh, some product information. And one of the uh, entries is the data format. And you'll see here we've got vector map local, and there's GML2, DWG, or shape. Uh, where we've got a little star, it just means that we have actually generated this data. So we've produced it ourselves from the data we've got supplied by Ordnance Survey. Uh, and in this case, as I said, you look at that and go, right, I want this in, in ArcGIS, therefore I'm going to take the shapefile format. That's going to be much more uh, easy to use. DWG, it could read it, but that's more for your CAD, uh, uh, CAD files, um, uh, and like AutoCAD or something like that, you would use DWG. But for, for our purposes, we would take the shapefile. Um, so 
we've got this data. Uh, this is available. Uh, this will tell you uh, for every product what's available. And when you get to that data, so what does it look like? So say I've asked for a shape file. Uh, now this might be common to you, but for some people it's quite confusing this. A shape file, when we say we're going to deliver this data as a shape file, what we really mean is it's going to be a, a series of files, uh, at least four, uh, usually more than four, uh, depends what the data is, but there's usually a group of of files which make up what is kind of, I suppose, simplistically called the shape file. So here we've got a DBF, a PRJ, an SHP, and an SHX. Together they form the shape file. And the thing that you have to remember when you get the data is that you need to keep these files together. So you can't separate them out, you can't put them in different folders, you can't split them up or rename them. Uh, you have to keep them together. Uh, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, we'll supply the data inside a zip file. So the only thing you need to do when you get your data from data download, if you've asked for a shape file, you'll get a zip file, unzip the zip file, and you'll then end up with a folder with multiple files within it. And if you just leave that alone, then uh, everything should work okay. Uh, but you just have to remember not to split them up. So. Um, that's for shape files. A uh, slightly different one is uh, master map topography. This is the very large scale data and for reasons of because of its size, because of the kind of complexity of it, uh, we recommend you take file geodatabase for this data if you're going to use it in ArcGIS. Uh, we don't supply it as shape files because the files would be too big. Um, file geodatabase can, can scale uh, so that you can ask for larger areas and get all the data. Um, the alternative is to take GML, uh, but that requires further processing. And you'd only do that if you need to, uh, for instance, merge several orders together or load it into a relational database. So maybe you need to load it into uh, PostGIS or Oracle or some other database that you're going to manage the data in. Then generally you could use GML for that and there's specific loaders for your particular environment that you would have. Um, for instance, if you really wanted to use GML in our ArcGIS desktop, then you can use what's called the Productivity Suite from Esri UK. And that should be available uh, in your institution, and that will allow you basically to convert the GML data into a file geodatabase. So it kind of does exactly what we've already done, but it gives you a little bit more control over that. You can select particular um, data types to load, so you might just want the topographic lines, uh, and that would be a one way of doing that, would be to use Productivity Suite. So uh, the, there are ways, there are some reasons for doing that, but generally, uh, nowadays, uh, unless there's a good reason, the file geodatabase is probably the easiest way. Uh, there's also one thing to note, where it is really necessary is where you're going to build a, a road network using ITN data. So if you're going to take the ITN data to build a road network, so say you want to do a drive time analysis, then taking the ITN data and using Productivity Suite to convert that is much easier than doing it any other way, because all the tools are already built in to Productivity Suite to do that. Um, so that's kind of how you deal with some vector data. With some raster data, again, I said uh, TIFF is your kind of go-to format or ASC for DTM and gridded bathymetry data. Uh, but TIFF is a very standard format that uh, comes uh, for backdrop mapping, for rasters, for aerial imagery, for different uh, types of raster. Um, it will usually contain a world file. Uh, although some of the data is what we call GeoTIFF and has the georeferencing embedded in it. Uh, and so you don't need the world file for that. But if there's a, a TFW world file with the data, then you need to keep that data together with the, uh, the original data. Uh, and sometimes you might need to specify the coordinate system. Uh, come on to this a little bit more, but the coordinate system of all the data that we supply from Digimap uh, 
I think apart from some of the data in Marine Digimap is in Ordnance Survey GB36, so British National Grid. Uh, if anything ever, if you need to specify the projection, then it's, it'll be British National Grid. Uh, if you want to know more about formats and conversion, there is a guide that we provide uh, in part of our help pages, uh, and it will tell you for each product uh, how to get the data into an ESRI product and other uh, GIS systems as well. So we'll give that for every different product, uh, and that gives you a kind of a, an overview guide for everything and, and all the different options for doing that. Um, so I'm not sure uh, quite how you're aware of what kind of ESRI software there is now, but there's maybe two versions of RGIS that you can have access to. There's desktop, which is the kind of traditional uh, version. Uh, it might be called ArcMap. Uh, it includes Arc Catalog, ArcScene, uh, various other components. And then there's also a new product called ArcGIS Pro. And it just depends at your university how things have been rolled out. But both of these products are the same, uh, are, are available. Generally, they're, they, they, they're doing the same sort of job. ArcGIS Pro is just a more modern version. Uh, it's been rebuilt for newer machines. Um, it, it just depends what what you say, what your university has, has got available. You can also have uh, access to ArcGIS Online which is an online GIS version. Uh, and again, all of these products will accept either shapefiles or file geodatabase in some form or other. Um, so it's worth just looking to see um, each of the different products, uh, how you would use shapefiles or file geodatabases in them. But uh, the resources, data, layer files will work with both desktop and pro. Um, just as a quick quick poll here. It would be useful just to know where people are in terms of uh, using desktop uh, applications. So I've just got a quick poll here of what um, GIS you actually use in terms of ArcGIS. So it would be useful just to find your answer to this. So I'll just pop up this poll quickly. So, just getting some answers here. So, it looks, uh, as far as I can see at the moment, most people are using desktop still. So, uh, that's kind of what I would expect um, at the moment. I think it's just uh, early days for Pro, although I think that's something that's going to come along. But it shouldn't really affect uh, what data you get from, from us. Uh, it's just you can use things like... Uh, if you're going to look at, say, the building heights in 3D, then you would want to maybe use Pro to do that because it can then view things in 3D. Um, you can look at 3D views for that. Uh, for, for getting the data in, um, it's basically very simple. You just load up ArcGIS, uh, use the Add Data button, uh, select the folder where you put the downloaded data that you've unzipped, and in that folder, you'll either have your your, um, your shapefile or your geodatabase or your uh, raster data sets. And then you can just select that. Sometimes you can also drag and drop some files into ArcView as well, uh, into ArcMap. Um, so for instance, with a, a raster data, you might find you've got a folder uh, called NZ. It's the OS tile, and then within that, you've got the different tiles of TIFF data within that. And even though there'll be a TFW with these, um, it'll just show you the TIFF files. So you just select one or more of these data sets, say add, uh, and it will automatically add that to your um, to your to your map. It will, in some cases, as I said, ask for a spatial reference. So uh, it just needs to know what the projection is. And you can do that uh, using Art Catalog to do that. 
Uh, a shapefile, again, similar idea. You might look at a folder that you've unzipped. It says NT. Uh, then within that, you'll have, we'll have split it all up into different layers. So these layers are things like building, building lines, uh, points, roads. Uh, you can select one or more of these shape files. So it'll just show the SHP file, although there'll be these other files associated with them as well. And so you can select one or more of those layers. All of the layers will give you the whole data set. Um, and then you can just say, maybe you can uh, look at that data. So you might load that. And it might come in looking like this, and you go, oh, well, that's not, uh, that's not really what I was looking for. Uh, this is just all of the data. It will come in with a default representation if it's a shapefile. It will just be points, lines, and areas uh, generally, and it'll just pick any sort of color. So the idea uh, then is that you then have to apply your own styling to this data. And generally, we provide, or there is there is some styling available for each product uh, that we supply. Um, so that's it without styling. Uh, I'll go on to styling in a minute. If we were just talking about a file geodatabase, again, it would be similar to that. You would just say, select the GDB file here, um, go into that. Uh, within that, there are then uh, different layers, and you would just select whatever layers you want uh, to view. And again, when you load that into um, our map, you would come up with some basic styling. It would just be points, lines, and areas with a default uh, style. So what we'd want to do is, um, if, if just as I kind of go back and say, if nothing appears or you don't see the data, then the easiest thing to sort of make sure you've loaded the data and it's there is to do a right click on one of the products and just say zoom to layer. And that will then find out, work out the extents of the data that you've loaded and, and zoom into that. And that will just allow you to uh, make sure you've actually got the data loaded and to recenter the data uh, on your window. Uh, so once you've got some data in, uh, say it's the vector data, then you want to do some styling on that. And I say there's sort of, we're going from this points, lines area to something that's actually uh, a bit more like our maps that we're used to looking at. Um, maybe look like it does in, in Digimap. The, the, for every product, I say, we provide some styles or we provide links to some styles. So you can go to this, um, I won't go through it all here, but this URL here, which you can look at later, how to apply style files uh, or layer files. Um, so you can take pre-built layer files and just apply them to the data to get that representation. And I say, if you look at the help pages for each product, you'll find links either to layer files that we've created or layer files that are provided by Ordnance Survey themselves. And you can then use those uh, for the data. Um, we're kind of running a little bit out of time here, so I won't go through this in a lot of detail, but just to say there's obviously uh, within ArcMap, there's lots of options there for uh, setting up the representations, um, I'd say loading ones that we already um, uh, supply. Uh, and they're always in the data information pages for each product. So if you go back to data download, look at that info button that we talked about later earlier, and at the bottom of that, product information, there's a link to um, another page which has links to the style files. Uh, like this here. So this is the, the help page. At the bottom we've got more info and then here we've got a links to say RGIS. Uh, if we've done that in a shape file then we've got layer files for that as well. So all that information is there, you can get the, the layer files and you can apply them uh, to set up your symbology or you can set up your own symbology uh, or you can, you can use the existing one and modify it uh, as you want. Other sources of style files, so I said Productivity Suite, if you download the data, if you convert the data using Productivity Suite, then there are some style files supplied with that. If you use other software like Interpose, then it gives you style files. Uh, so there are different tools and usually there's some uh, styling associated with those as well. Um, 
I'll skip this uh, poll here. This was just kind of asking what uh, what different data sources you use, but I'm assuming most of you get Digimap. There's also other sources of base maps, things like the ESRI base maps, uh, there's data.gov, there's uh, your own data obviously as well. Um, I won't go into this in, again too much detail, but uh, as I said, all the OS data is in British National Grid. Most of the other data is also in British National Grid, except some of the marine data, which is in WGS 84. Um, just as a because that's the kind of standard format that they use for that. But all the all the OS uh, and most of the other data is British National Grid. So it's always worth checking uh, if you're starting to merge data together. Use use different data. Use some of the our data together with the Esri base map data. Then you might have to apply some transformations uh, to that to make sure that it all displays correctly. And we've written some help on that. There's a page within our help pages on transformations in ArcGIS so that you can see how to set up different transformations. Otherwise, um, you might end up with something like that this year. So we've got some aerial imagery or the base map imagery, which is from Esri base maps, and that is in WGS84. Our OS data is in OSGB36. Uh, we overload these together. If we don't select any transformation, then we'll get these errors of about 100 meters in the data. So that's not what you want. So you need to have uh, a, you need to apply a transformation uh, to that data to make sure that it fits together. There's lots of other tools which I'm not going to go into again in, in any detail. Things like merging, mosaicing, clipping data. It's all just about getting what data you want together. Uh, and again, there's help pages uh, on uh, in our help pages. Uh, if you go to uh, this here, the standard ArcGIS functions, uh, and there's various help pages on that. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit of an overview, just to kind of warn you or, or let you know that this is the new version of data download. So you know, at the beginning, I showed you the kind of old version. The new version is like this. It's very similar, does exactly the same. The basket is the same. Uh, you again have the choice of formats, the same way, GML, DWG, file geodatabase. So it might look a little bit different, but actually uh, underneath it's, it does the same things. We're going to add some enhancements to this as well, though, to do with uh, clipping the data on export. So you might not need that uh, clipping um, uh, to do that within uh, the GIS itself. Um, so that's that. Resources. Uh, within the Resource Center, if you go to the Digimap homepage, you'll see a, a tab called Resources. You can look in here, and uh, there's a section. Oh, sorry, there's a section called GIS CAD Resources, and in there there's ArcGIS, and that's where all these uh, uh, help pages have been talking about transformations and various other things. You can find uh, information about that either in the ArcGIS or the datum transformations um, locations within that. Um, there's also lots of exercises that we've provided. So working with GIS and CAD in the learning and teaching zone. If you want to just go through some exercises, uh, we've got some basic ones for ArcGIS Pro now. So you can maybe, if you're if you're not if you've not used Pro and you want to kind of have a, a little introduction and see how it compares to desktop, then you can uh, run some of those exercises. We've got comparison ones there. How to do it in Pro, how to do it in desktop, how to do it in online. Uh, using the same data. Uh, so that can be a useful uh, inf introductory exercise. Uh, if you need any help with anything, uh, getting the data from data download or using it in uh, ArcGIS, then uh, feel free to contact us uh, either through our chat or email um, and we'll uh, try and get back to you and get some help. Um, so really that's um, all I was going to cover today. Uh, sorry, it's been maybe a little bit rushed at the end there. We're kind of, it always seems to take uh, a little bit longer, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of information about getting data into uh, ArcGIS. Um, I say, if you have any questions, uh, then uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, but anyway, 
or if you've got any questions, you can uh, ask any questions through uh, the GoToWebinar interface here. I'm not sure if Tom's been answering anything. Uh, it doesn't uh, look like it at the moment, but you can also ask some questions through there as well for the next few minutes. But anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, I say all these resources will be available online probably in the next uh, couple of days. So you'll get an email uh, informing you of that, and then you can go and have a look. And I say all the links that are in there and everything else you can follow as well. So hopefully that's been of use. Uh, there'll be a poll, uh, I think, at the end of this. Uh, if you could just maybe answer that. Um, but thanks for listening. And uh, let's see, look, look forward uh, to some of the other webinars that we're doing. And um, see you later.